Welcome to Auto Guild. In this video, I will explain what to look for when shopping for an exhaust header. I'll pull out all the little details that add strength, reliability, horsepower, and even style so that you can know you're getting the best product that will last, not rust, warp, or leak. And don't miss the last two on this list. I'm going to explain the performance differences between a tri-y header and a four into one header so that you can decide which one is best for your project. And finally, I'm going to answer that age old question of whether or not you should ceramic coat your headers. Let's start with number one, flange thickness. You want to go with at least a three eighths of an inch thick flange. Three eighths of an inch is bare minimum. Go a little bit thicker if you can. Yes, only a few millimeters will help. This will prevent your header from warping. If your header warps, it's going to leak and sound terrible. And severely warped headers can even break studs and bolts. And getting a broken stud or bolt out of a cylinder head is no fun at all. Also, make sure that the header you buy has had the mating surface sanded flat so that it will properly seal up against the cylinder head. Number two, welded ports. Many header ports are only welded on the inside of the tube and flange, and they should also be welded on the outside too. This is another sign of a good header. Doing so helps increase the header rigidity and better supports the weight of the header in the exhaust system. Flanges will sometimes even be welded with a really cool silicone braze that gives it kind of a super cool look as you can see there on the left. Some companies will cheap out and just do a stitch weld. That's better, but not ideal. It makes you wonder how many customers had broken headers before they started to do that. Three, hand TIG welds. TIG welding is a high quality weld that looks a lot nicer than MIG. These days, most of the welds you'll find on headers are pretty good. But still, if you see really nice welds, it's just a sign of a super high quality brand that cares about even these little small details. But of course, pretty welds do not make more horsepower. It just gives you a small clue that this may be a quality header and it looks really nice. Number four, equal length headers. This is one you've probably heard of, but you may not know why it's good. The exhaust valves of the engine are firing at different times as the engine spins around. This creates waves of exhaust passing through the tubing of the header. And look at the header on the left. As the waves each flow through the header tube of the same length, the pulses are spaced out evenly when they reach the collector. On the right side of this diagram, you can see an unequal length headers. The top ones are shorter than the bottom ones. This creates a possible situation where one or more of the exhaust pulse waves is hitting the collector at the same time. This creates a bottleneck and turbulence inside the collector, which slows everything down and causes a loss of horsepower. Equal length headers also have more of a scavenging effect as the pulses in one tube flowing out creates a vacuum on the other tubes in the collector, actually pulling the exhaust gauses out of the other tubes. This scavenging effect makes the whole thing more efficient. Now, at high RPM, this horsepower loss can be substantial. Hooker headers actually claims up to 50 horsepowers can be lost in race engines at high RPM. Although I'm guessing for most applications, it's much, much less than that, especially on the street. If you have any firsthand experience with this, let us know, we would appreciate it. Also, I have a link below to a great video that explains more about this in detail. Number five, cone-shaped collector. Deep inside the collector of the header, you should find a cone-shaped connector welded to the pipes. The only way that you can see it is to look into the collector and it should look like the image on the left. This cone shape helps the air exit and also pull air from the surrounding pipes. It looks like this during manufacturing. Call it a cone, spear, pyramid, whatever. The purpose of this pyramid is to control the exhaust gases so that they do not re-enter the primary tube and travel backwards towards the engine. But just another small thing that's a sign of quality and attention to detail. It's not a huge power gainer, but every little bit helps making more power and increasing efficiency. Number six, stainless steel. You want stainless steel headers, but did you know there are over 150 grades of stainless? But luckily, headers are almost always 304 or 409. And one quick note, if you can afford it, please don't consider mild steel headers. They're going to rust in no time. And those mild steel headers you buy often have a cheap water-based coating on them to protect them during storage and shipping. That has to be completely stripped or sanded off and then repainted before installing. Okay, on to stainless. Quick stainless steel chemistry lesson. Yes, I did say chemistry, do not click away. I've made this super easy. When it comes to stainless headers, you want 304 stainless and there's two reasons why chromium and nickel content. You can see the big difference between these two. With 409, the chromium content is half of 304, 
and 304 has 10 times the nickel content of 409. A magnet will stick to 409 stainless headers. Those pieces that the magnet is sticking to will rust. A magnet will not stick to 304. 409 will develop surface rust, although it will not deteriorate and begin to flake off like mild steel will. 409 has more iron, so it rusts. Simple as that. 304 will corrode slightly, but it turns kind of a cool goldish color that you can see here. If you dig this kind of detailed content, please hit the thumbs up and think about subscribing. Number seven is try-y header versus four into one header. This is the age old question. The commonly accepted theory is that the four into one header offers more top end power, while the try-y header is designed to bolster mid-range torque. The theory is behind the try-y header is that with just having two tubes, the exhaust from one tube rushing past the other tube helps scavenge air out of that other tube. So if you want to tow or cruise around town, think about the try-y header. If you're looking for maximum high RPM power, go with the four into one. Of course, there's a lot more to performance of a header than simply this design, but this can give you some indication of what you'll get when deciding between these two styles. I've got a couple more articles linked below in the description if you wanna learn a little bit more. Number eight, ceramic coating. Ceramic coating or not, that's the question. In my opinion, ceramic coating does not look as nice as raw 304 stainless, but it certainly looks better than painted headers, especially after miles of use. It's definitely gonna hold up better than paint. If controlling heat in the engine compartment is a big issue, then yes, it could be a great option. And this is even more important if you've got a turbo car that generates a lot of engine compartment heat. Ceramic is designed to keep more heat inside the tubes, and by retaining heat within the headers, the coating is said to increase exhaust gas velocity, creating better scavenging and more power, also reducing intake temperatures because of the lower engine compartment temperatures, but Hot Rod Magazine ran a test and found that there was no improvement in engine power. They did claim, though, that the temperature on the outside of the headers of the ceramic coated headers was 50% lower than the painted headers. I've got a link to that article below if you want to read more. But for me, I have three problems with ceramic coated headers. The first one is the price. It's $350 to $500 to have a set of V8 headers ceramic coated depending on the length. And you're getting maybe zero horsepower gain, maybe a little bit more. As I said also, I personally love the look of raw stainless steel, especially the 304, even as it corrodes a little bit. And third, my experience with installing headers is that you usually have to clearance them a little bit. So if you clearance ceramic coated headers by hitting them with a hammer or making other adjustments, you're going to ruin the finish. So I suppose you could clearance them and then have them ceramic coated, but if you buy them already ceramic coated, you could have problems with that. So I say get some good 304 stainless headers and leave them as is. They look beautiful even as they corrode. If you want to learn more about engines, check out my video comparing the small block Chevy and the big block on the left. Or check out my video explaining the 29 reasons why the LS engine is better than the small block Chevy. Click on those right now. Thank you for watching Auto Guild and good luck with your project.